Last time we looked at the original Respace sound. Now let's look at the mid 90s to late 90s style Reese mutations. These are bass sounds based on the original Reese bass sound, but taken in directions that were new and fresh, as I say, in the mid to late 90s. Sounds like this. So what is even the point in revisiting these sounds? Well, quite simply, there are methods that were used to make these sounds that aren't really well known publicly, but they really should be because we've come so far with technology and techniques and everything, it's a shame to lose knowledge along the way. Just because it was a secret at the time doesn't mean it necessarily needs to be a secret now. We learn from things in the past and we can build on those things and make more exciting things for the present and for the future. A common practice seems to be to take two two sawtooth oscillators and detune them slightly away from each other. So you would tune one slightly up and the other slightly down and they sound together like this. Notice that that sound has a sort of pulsing character to it. As you play higher up the keyboard that pulsing gets quicker and as you play lower down the keyboard that pulsing gets slower. That's quite a nice start, but I think if there were too many tunes with that kind of bass sound, it would very quickly get boring. It's not particularly the most textured version of a Reese bass sound. An alternative method just uses one oscillator. And what we're using here is the cross mod feature. What cross mod does is it creates a second oscillator that then modulates the pitch of the first oscillator. That's basically what CrossMod does. Technically, this is analog FM. You can actually do this with a genuine analog synth if that synth allows you to use one oscillator to modulate the pitch of another oscillator. That's effectively all we're doing here. It's quite similar to digital FM, like for example, FM8. It's a little bit different from that, but you can get similar results if you do use digital FM. It's not quite the same sound, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, the point here is to produce a Reese-like texture. Not all Reese spaces should sound identical. That's kind of the point of using a synth to produce a resound rather than just using the classic sample. So you'll find that as you tweak the cross mod there are various sweet spots along the way. When there's more intense cross mod, you get a much more aggressive, bitey, growly sound, and you get a very, very strong pulsing sound, which, as I say, gets faster the higher up you go on the key range. Now let's try the same thing with a square oscillator. It will give us similar, but quite different results. One thing to note is that I have my filter in key follow mode. The filter is on 100% key follow mode, which means that the cutoff is following the note that I'm playing. So the higher up the key range I play, the brighter the sound, and the lower down the key range, the duller the sound. If I didn't have that on, then the sound would be a lot brighter, a lot harsher. And you can mess around with the different filter types as well for slightly different characters. You might also want to push up the resonance to get a bit more bite. Or just use it more gently like I was originally. And again, as we tweak that cross mod amount, we get different textures and different characteristics. Let's find some different sweet spots along the way.
And then you could even bring the filter down even more and use a little bit of distortion. 